Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I am Chase Senior. The Eagles preseason slate is officially in the rear view. Now we can look forward to the start of the regular season after this 27 to 13 loss for Philadelphia. Coming up on the show, some Eagles preseason winners and losers for this finale against Indianapolis. First, though, make sure you subscribe to the show. We're closing in here on 49,000 subscribers. We're a little less than 300 people away. And if you're looking for insightful, informative, entertaining, real, authentic Eagles coverage that comes your way on this channel every single day, year round, then lock us in and hit that sub button. Let's begin here with my preseason week three winners. I want to start with Devin Allen. I don't think that his performance tonight was enough to earn him a spot on the 53-man roster, but I will say that this Eagles special teams unit, both with their returners, with Britton Covey, and their special teams coverage is a little bit of a concern for me. And Devin Allen, maybe he earned his way on the practice squad once again. That 73-yard return that he had to start this game in which he broke a tackle at the 15 and was able to flip the field to set up that score for Trey Sermon is something that Britton Covey really hasn't been able to show in an Eagles uniform. And that Olympic-like speed was on display for Devin Allen. He also made a tackle as a gunner on special teams on a punt return coverage. That was really impressive. So if you're looking for a way to impress the coaching staff, to sneak onto that 53 at some point, because I don't think it happens initially, or to get yourself on that P squad in which maybe you can earn a spot on the team at some point, Devin Allen was able to do that tonight. Jake Elliott, winner number two. A little bit odd to see him on this list, but how can he not be? Had a 57-yard field goal early in this game and then backed that up with the 52-yarder. The first one was from the left hash. The second one was from that right hash. He is in midseason form. Like I said, special teams, underrated, undervalued sometimes, Really critically important, though, to a team's overall success throughout a season, and sometimes a game can come down to special teams and how they perform, whether it's a win or a loss. We saw that in the Super Bowl, and Jake Elliott, he was fantastic tonight. Eli Ricks, going to be really difficult for Eli Ricks to not make this roster, and I hope that Philadelphia is able to find some way to have all of these young DBs who showed up, showed out throughout the preseason on this team. I'm talking about guys like Eli Ricks and Makai Garner and Josh Joby and um, you know some of these other young players who did a lot of impressive things throughout the preseason. Ricks, once again tonight, he had a couple of pass breakups, a couple of big plays. He was also guarding Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce. Those are the top two wide receivers on this Colts offense because Indianapolis played their ones on offense throughout that entire first half. And for Eli Ricks... To go step for step with Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce and have a pass breakup against Alec Pierce. Again, the top two options at wide receiver for Indianapolis. That shows that he can clearly play in this league. We saw him have those instincts in week one against Balt um yeah, week one against Baltimore when he had that pick six. This guy, he's a good player and probably should have been drafted. Kind of wild that he was a UDFA. Philadelphia has an opportunity to maybe have a gem though on this Eagles roster here. Winner number four, Tyree Jackson. Another player who I'm not sure is going to make the 53-man roster, but in training camp and in the preseason years prior to this, he's displayed that he could play at this level. Long, rangy, athletic. Last game had a couple of big plays from Tanner McKee. Tonight, three catches, 31 yards along of 20, but it's the way that he looks, it's the way that he moves, it's the way that he runs that leads me to believe that he could be a backup tight end in this league, but there is a little bit of a blockage at that tight end spot for Philly here because I think what they're going to do, Dallas Goddard obviously is going to make this team. After that, Jack Stoll and Grant Calcaterra, they might only have three tight ends on the opening 53-man roster. Lastly, let's give some respect to Tyreek Maddox-Williams, who was just recently picked up by Philadelphia, the Philly native who played his high school ball at Timber Creek led the Eagles in tackles tonight, 
made a couple of good plays against the run, a couple of big plays against the run, snuffing plays out on some of those money downs, third and fourth down. Then he had an interception of Sam Ellinger in which he was able to read the play, pick him off, and Tyreek Maddox-Williams probably won't make this 53. In fact, he's not going to make this 53. But with how he played tonight, did he earn himself a spot on this Eagles practice squad as well? Because he was rangy. He was fast. He was instinctual. He was all over the place tonight. He was the MVP for this Eagles defense. Before we get to our losers, make sure you sign up with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, offering a 125% deposit bonus. All you have to do, use that link down below. Chatsports.com slash Eagles bet. Promo code Eagles125 for a 125% deposit bonus. You put in 100, you get 125 back, and you get 225 to game with this upcoming NFL season where you could put your money down on the Eagles to win the division, win the NFC, win the Super Bowl. All those odds available at BetUS. Sign up today. Preseason week three losers. Joseph Nagata, a guy who I've really been high on all throughout this preseason. He's going to be a loser, unfortunately, and I think his roster bubble did burst tonight against the Indianapolis Colts. Tanner McKee made a good throw in which he fitted in between a couple of defenders and a two-minute drill, trying to drive the offense down the field before halftime to put some points on the board, and they got him made a really tough catch, took a big hit. Then in trying to pick up yards after the catch, took a big lick, fumbled the football. Can't fumble the football in that type of situation. And you saw that when he did fumble the ball, he was a little bit deflated. You could tell um, he knew that he let one get away. And I think that this is a player that would be wise to bring back on the practice squad. Kind of like what the Eagles did with Deion Kane last year. Big body, jump ball type of wide receiver. Can thrive on some of those back shoulder balls downfield. Too good to not have as a part of your plans as a practice squad player. Trey Sermon, another loser here. I'm not going to knock him totally for not picking up yards with an offensive line that just wasn't good, with a bunch of backups that really struggled all throughout the night in pass protection as Tanner McKee and Ian Book were under siege, but also in the run game. 16 carries, 30 yards for Trey Sermon. Did have uh, the lone Eagles touchdown tonight in which he was able to lower the shoulder, show some physicality, and get into the end zone just not a lot of burst. And last week when he missed that block and pass pro and he fumbled the ball away, I had said he just squandered an opportunity to make this 53-man roster. And tonight, if he showed up, showed out, maybe he was going to be able to sneak on. Most likely not. But tonight, he didn't do anything to really impress me all that much. And then lastly, Janarius Robinson. There were two plays in which he had Sam Ellinger bottled up in the backfield. One on a design carry for Ellinger, and the other had him there for a sack. He whiffed. He let him go. He missed it. He did not finish when he had him bottled up. And those are plays as a guy who's on the fringe of making the 53, where if you let sacks go by the wayside and you let TFLs go unfinished and you don't finish your business, Teams see that, and they're like, look, if you can't finish the job, we have to bring somebody in who's going to be able to finish that job. On top of those two missed monster plays that could have been potential game changers for Philadelphia here in this game, he jumped off sides on a play as well. So I think tonight, maybe he may have just worked his way off the roster as compared to working himself on this roster. So preseason, it is in the rear view. It is officially complete for Philadelphia here. A lot of good things week one against Baltimore, week two against Cleveland, and then this week against Indianapolis. The starters did not play at all in preseason for Philadelphia. Interested to see if they run into any rust issues. Week one against the New England Patriots team that is going to be honoring Tom Brady that night. You know that they're going to be looking to get revenge with Tom Brady back in town for losing Super Bowl 52. And I'm a little bit concerned about that game just because Bill Belichick is obviously going to have his guys ready to play with two first-time, you know, newer coordinators, excuse me, because Sean Desai, you know, he's called plays before as a DC, but uh, Brian Johnson has never called plays as an offensive coordinator before. So those are some concerns for me, but Nick Sirianni and the Eagles obviously siding on health as compared to getting reps for some of their first stringers, and last year they were obviously so good. Um, 
with those first stringers, and they're obviously one of the most talented teams in the National Football League. Thanks to everybody who tuned in to our watch party tonight. Eagles, Colts, we appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe and keep it locked here for daily Eagles content.